I, I have a question. Um, I think that some people, the problem that they have regarding looking at uh, looking at the ancient context in order to glean more understanding out of the Torah is that the way Misora is presented today, people have this notion that's kind of been kind of instilled in them that the Misora is the totality of everything we are to understand of the Torah and that everything that you that can or should ever be understood from the Torah is contained within that Misora and therefore to tell somebody you know you need to start looking at ancient context in order to better understand certain things they are going to feel like like there's like a almost a, a, an infidelity with that, with that Misora. Sure, I hear that. Look, look. Um, um, Judaism is for all of the Jewish people. And the Jewish people, all of them, are strung out in terms of their abilities, intellectually, uh, theologically. And therefore, there are a lot of things that, 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 that uh, are part of our, our educational system, which work for a lot of people and are very important to teach, okay? When we, tell, when we instruct and we tell our youngsters, we tell ourselves that our, our, our Misora is pristine, it is as perfect, it is as, as it was given to Moshe Rabbeinu, and it is total. We have all of the body of wisdom given to us by our teachers. And therefore, our teachers have all the answers. Um, there's something that's very warm and fuzzy about that. And it works for a lot of people. Um, throughout the tradition, there's always been a much wider tent about that. Uh, the whole idea of chidush goes against that. You know, this, I think, the, the, the type of, of approach to the Misorah, uh, Ben, that you were, that you were, the ben that you were saying, um, tends to work for the less educated masses and is given to the less educated masses. And maybe it's a good thing because needed it works. For them, needed for, for that context. Yes, yes, yes. But it's clear that, you know, the whole notion of chidush goes against that. The whole notion of chidush is that there are, there are going to always be new insights uh, and that's, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's something to be celebrated. And it's our avodah. This is the way in which we serve a Kodesh Baruch by coming up with new insights. This isn't Berman saying this. This is the Rambam, this is the Nitziv, this is uh, Rechaim Yivalajan, this is everybody. This is Rechaim Bris. This is you know, many, 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 many. Obviously, there's a limit to the, to the things that we're allowed to say. There's a limit to, you know, everything has to be in, you know, in, 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 great, in great reverence for the things that were said before. Uh, but, but that said, you know, within, within the frameworks, there's tremendous, not only room for Chidush, this is a religious imperative. That is what I would say. Now, again, this is not something that's, that, that works for everybody. And it's important that, you know, for a, lot, for a lot of the masses out there, that a very simple message is given. Nothing's been lost. Everything's exactly the way Moshe Rabbeinu got it. It works. So there's a fine line between someone who might need to hear uh, a certain version of how things are presented, not to necessarily try to attempt to like, let's say burst that bubble because certain people might need to hear it that way. And we need to kind of protect that also. But for those that are naturally more inclined towards, you know, further, further thought about these things, then yeah, that, that become, it becomes our imperative to be able to provide ample and intellectually honest answers about these things. Yes, absolutely.